video, we're going to be talking about Minger's theorem. Um, but before we do that, we want to introduce a couple of other definitions we're going to need. So let's consider this graph in green. And I've got a couple of vertices labeled in a different color, U and V. And we're going to explore the idea of how many vertices we have to remove or delete from the graph to completely separate U and V. So when I say separate U and V, I mean we want to disconnect the graph and we want to make sure that u and v end up in different pieces of the graph. Okay, so for example, um, what happens if I erase this vertex here? Right, so all these edges disappear. And so we have a graph that looks like this. Well, I can still get from u to v, right, <clears throat> along this path along the outside, but then if I delete, say, A or B, right, then that is going to disconnect my graph, and it will leave U and V in different pieces. Okay, <clears throat> so this was the original graph, so we saw that by deleting A and E, <clears throat> I could disconnect U and V. Okay, well that idea is called a separating set. So for any two vertices, U and V in a graph, a UV separating set is a set of vertices whose deletion from the graph results in a disconnected graph, and it's a disconnected graph in which U and V are in distinct components. And when you have a UV set separating set of minimum size, that's called a minimum UV separating set. So it's a set with minimum cardinality. So let's think again, here we'll check out this graph. So again, I've got a couple of vertices labeled U and V, and we want to think about what's the smallest number of vertices that we can delete to disconnect these guys. So just as an example, I could take these three and disconnect them, and that would work. Okay, so imagine if I delete this one, right? <clears throat> and then I delete this one, And then I come down here and delete this one. Now it's disconnected and they're in different pieces. Okay, so that was three vertices. So then the question is, can we do it with any fewer than three? And so you might want to think about this if you want to pause the video and think about it. It turns out we can use fewer than, feet, than three. What we can do is delete this one like we did last time. But now, after we do this, you can see that U is only connected to the rest of the graph via this single edge. So if we delete this vertex as well, now U is in its own component, right? And then V is over here with the rest of the graph. So that certainly separates U and V. So it turns out that you can't do any better than two, right? Because there's not a cut vertex, so there's no way you can disconnect this graph with just a single vertex. And you can use two vertices, to separate U and V. So in this case, this vertex, <clears throat> uh, we'll call it V1, and this vertex V2, those two vertices form a minimum UV separating set. Okay, the other idea that we need is something called internally disjoint. So a set of paths, of UV paths, so that's paths that start at U and end at V, are called internally disjoint if every two paths have no vertices in common other than U and V. So remember, here I've got some paths drawn in green and some paths drawn in purple. And paths are just sequences of vertices where one vertex is followed by an, one of its neighbors and you keep going along. And in a path, you're not allowed to repeat vertices. So we don't even need a picture. You can just think, okay, well, I go from vertex 1 to vertex 3 to 5 to 7 to 6. So this is a V1, V6 path. This is a V1, V6 path. This is a V1, V6 path. And the question is, are they internally disjoint? <clears throat> so you might want to ask that, answer that yourself um, if you want to pause and think about it. The answer here is no, because if you come down here, you can see V7 is in this path and V7 is in this path. Okay, well, that's not allowed, right? <clears throat> we say every two paths have no vertices in common other than U and V. So they're allowed to have V1 and V6 in common, but any other two are not allowed to share anything on the sort of internal part of this path, right? Internally disjoint, meaning what's on the inside. 
So these are not internally disjoint. This set in green. But what about the set in purple? Okay, so again, you may want to pause to think about this for a second. It turns out that these are internally disjoint. Right, because what's on the inside of this path? V4 and V10. Here it's V6, V8, V9, and V5. Here it's V3 and V7. Nothing repeats, so these are all internally disjoint. Okay. So here is the theorem. <clears throat> Menger's theorem says... Let u and v be non-adjacent vertices in a graph. So that means that u and v don't have an edge between them uh, that goes directly from u to v. The size of a minimum uv separating set equals the maximum number of internally disjoint uv paths. Okay, so you may want to think about that um, or just read it aloud to yourself a couple of times. The size of a minimum UV separating set, so that's the minimum number of vertices you need to remove from the graph to separate U from V, right? Put them in different components of a disconnected graph. That number is exactly the same as the biggest number of internally disjoint paths between U and V. So for example, how might you use this? <clears throat> how many internally disjoint V1 to V5 paths are in G? Okay, V1 to V5 paths. So I've labeled V1 and V5 in the slightly lighter purple here. And it, there are quite a lot of ways you can get from V1 to V5, right? For example, maybe you go along this downside here, or maybe you go from V1 to V11 to V10 to V5, right? Or maybe you come along the top and you go from V1 to V9 over here to V6 and then up to V8 to V10 to V5 or something. So graphs can get quite complicated, so answering this question can be difficult, but Minger's theorem makes it a lot easier because all we have to look at is what's a minimum separating set for V1, V5, right? What's a minimum V1, V5 separating set? <clears throat> so again, you may want to think about this for a second before you hear the answer. If you'd like, you can pause the video. It turns out that the size of a minimum V1, V5 separating set is 2 because you can delete V4 right, so we delete V4 and then if you want to remove V5 from the rest of the graph, right, you can just delete V10, and that'll do it. All right, so now V5 is in a component by itself, and the rest of this graph is all connected with V1 up here. So that will work. And you can also look at the graph and see there are no cut vertices in this graph. Okay, so there are no cut vertices, but a set of size 2 will work. So the answer here is... There are two. There are only two internally disjoint paths, right? Because of Menger's theorem, that's so by Menger's theorem. That's how we know this. Because it's relatively easy, at least in small ish graphs like this one, to determine what is um, the size of a minimum separating set. That's a more straightforward problem than determining the number of internally disjoint paths. But it turns out that those are the same. The size of a minimum separating set is equal to the maximum number of internally disjoint paths. And this is just one of a lot of different types of results that have this min-max relationship. So we're looking at the minimum size of a UV separating set, and that's equal to the maximum number of internally disjoint paths. Um, so this is an optimization problem, right, when you're looking for the minimum or the maximum of something. And there are a lot of problems that have this um, this quality where if you can find the minimum number of something that's equal to the maximum number of something else that may not be directly related right but they are somehow mathematically related um, which is what we see in Menger's theorem is that somehow um, the size of a minimum separating set is directly related to the number of internally disjoint paths you can get in a graph so this is just one of a lot of these types of results in graph theory that use a min-max relationship. So this is Menger's theorem. <clears throat>